Mm. Seems like there's some mighty and powerful gods here. And Lucy. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review of Hammer of the Gods, episode 19 of Supernatural, season 5. And this is probably one of my favorite episodes of this season. There's so many cool aspects to this episode. Different mythology on different gods, whether it be pagan, Norse, Hindu, all of these. It, it, they are able to push them all into this episode to make them all entertaining, as well as give us a very satisfying character arc for Gabriel that would eventually be completely retconned and ruined in later seasons and we finally have a means of how to take down Lucifer through great sacrifice. The episode starts off with the brothers coming to a hotel which I wish I wish I could take you guys to but unfortunately it was pretty much being ready to be demolished. They demolished it not too long after this episode was filmed. Everything seems kind of way better than it should be. It's a four-star hotel in the middle of nowhere, and they slowly start to realize that there are gods here. They're all having a meeting about what to do with Lucifer, all the while making sure to keep Dean and Sam captive in their own building. And we get some really good humor between the two, where Dean's walking down the hallway and all of a sudden he sees an elephant in the room and turns out to be another guy. Or when the Norse god and... Oh, I can't remember where the other guy is, they're starting to yell at each other and they're talking about who's older. There's actually some pretty good humor in this episode for such a heavy hitting episode. And this is another one from Andrew Dabb and David Laughlin. These guys could create good episodes together. This is probably the best one that they ever wrote together because of how much happens in this episode and how good everything is. Once the gods kind of confer about what they're going to do, Gabriel appears. But everyone still knows him as Loki rather than the actual archangel, at least to some. We have him trying to get the boys out, but also still not being willing to kind of face his brother and do what needs to be done. And in the end, he gets pulled in and he kind of gets trapped in. They think that they've killed him. But really, he's actually just faked it, and that's what one of the big best jokes is. That wasn't the real one. That was a fake. Nothing can kill me. I love Richard Spike Jr. He's so great as this character, which is why when they brought him back, I swear it was just for fan service because of how funny his character is. He's a really funny character. I feel his arc was completed. Maybe a little bit short, but it was still a full completed arc with this episode because once Lucifer arrives, shit gets bad really fast. Like, you always think that there's gonna be this big fight scene, but he literally slaughters everyone. There's blood all over the walls. There's corpses everywhere. He kills all of them, but one. Punches Boulder right through the frickin' through the heart. It's so good. But when it comes down to who's gonna live, Gabriel finally stands up in front of his brother and he finally faces him, albeit for a false hope. Lucifer is able to see through his tricks knowing that he taught Gabriel most of those tricks and he's able to kill Gabriel. And we have that shot of Gabriel on the floor showing the wings, which looks like permanent death. Not this fake death crap, Andrew Dad, that you would later retcon. You would later retcon your own goddamn crap. But then, he leaves them a video that describes how to take down Lucifer using the four rings of the horseman to lock him in the cage. I like where this part falls. Because yeah, sure, at this point we're still on Team Free Will, but we're like, how the fuck are these guys going to win? And now we finally get an avenue of victory. Then, we get to meet... Pestilence, the very end of the episode, who I always kind of mistaken for Jim Carrey. I know it's not, but this guy really looks like Jim Carrey sometimes, like an older version of him. And the guy is a literal walking COVID trigger bomb as he sneezes on everyone and touches everything in the room and then he continues driving on in his crappy little beater, which I swear it looks like a Ford Pinto. Either way, this episode has such fantastic elements. It has some great humor. It has some great levity to it. The production design of this episode is some of the best. When Lucifer comes in and starts slaughtering everyone, it completely blows you away. And so does the fight scene with Gabriel. You think that he's got a trick up his sleeve. You think that this is actually his means of defeating him or at least getting out. 
but he fails. He dies. This character, who we have seen the brothers repeatedly try to kill multiple times throughout this show, finally killed and we feel complete loss. So even though we have an avenue of victory on our hands, or an avenue of success, we got it at a great loss. And I really like the weight that this episode has. And I think I said in the previous review, I rewatched this episode because I think they did show a rerun of it. I remember watching it a second time on television and not like pre-recorded or anything like that. But I really enjoyed this episode so much that when I watched it a second time, I enjoyed it just as much. All in all, it's a superior episode. What else more could you ask for for a bunch of gods being slaughtered by the literal devil? It's great. So in the end, I am going to give Hammer of the Gods, a 7 out of 7. This is a solid episode. It's one of the best of this season. It sets up the final three episodes very well in terms of what we're going to do with Lucifer. And at this point, we're only one episode left in terms of kind of being varied of how it goes. The last three episodes of the season is The Devil You Know, Two Minutes to Midnight and Office of Swan Song. The Devil You Know is actually one of the episodes that I'm still a little bit sketchy on. I remember bits of it. I know the Pestilence is in it. And I remember that Crowley does this. was like, this is my this is my hound. I'm actually kind of curious of seeing what's going to happen. Because we're going into the last episode that I kind of have a bit of an iffy memory on. And if you guys would like to support a good cause, my buddy Emilio over on the channel Citizens is once again doing his October charity stream. This time it is for the First Nations Development Institute. The charity stream will be starting on October 23rd at 1 p.m. Pacific time, so if you guys want to check that out and see what you can do to help, and you also can get some prizes from it, check out the link in the description below. But let's see what you guys had to say about this episode here. Well, at least to say you guys had a lot to say. Hammer of the Gods, Hammer of the Gods, Hammer of the Gods. Probably the best episode of Supernatural, period. Lucifer's face after he stabs Gabriel is the moment I think about when I think early Supernatural. It really shines a light on how he used to actually have motivations other than self-service and cartoon evil, a cartoonish evil. It is a powerful moment. I have been waiting for this review ever since you started reviewing season three, and I remember when he commented on that, so that was like kind of cool, full circle. Finally happy to give you, uh, you that review, sir. A fantastic episode, easily one of my favorites of season five and the show in general. I liked the whole shining vibe of the hotel, and I was glad that the show finally addressed other religions and gods. If I had to nitpick something about this episode, that it would be that I was kind of bothered by Lucifer having so much more power than the old gods. He blasted through those gods like they were tissue paper. The old gods couldn't even get a scratch on Lucifer. I can guess that the reason why the power of the old gods was reduced was by their relative number of believers. Yes, that is probably most likely why. I was very sad to see the trickster slash Gabriel go in this episode. In the first five seasons of the show, he only appeared in four episodes, but still managed to become one of my favorite characters of Supernatural. I think even Lucifer did feel a bit bad about taking out his old brother. Oh, you can totally see it, and that's a great sympathetic angle to the character, and it helps you kind of adjust and, and sympathize with the villain, which is such good writing. The final few minutes that introduced the Horseman Pestilence pretty much predicted 2020. Overall, I give it a 20. <laughs> Overall, I give this episode a 7 out of 7. Hammer of the Gods is a brilliant episode. I love that all the other gods, of the smaller gods, all meet up and talk about what to do with the apocalypse and, and what they should do. Gabriel's death always hits me. He finally stood up to his brother and died before they retconned it in season 13. I like the ending where they finally have a way to stop Lucifer. Uh, by slamming him back in the cage. They already have two rings, the cliffhanger and the horseman that was cool shows that well, the next one the brothers are going to have to go up against. I love the contentiousness between the, uh, some of the gods. Odin calmly and proudly saying he'll be eaten by a great wolf makes me laugh to this day. I know there is some controversy regarding the way the gods were depicted and dispatched. It seems to me that such semi-beings were already more or less considered tuplas deriving their existence and growing, waning powers from the beliefs of those who worship them. Yeah, the people just were start, starting to not really believe in them as much. As Supernatural was always from the perspective of Judo-Christianity, I don't understand why it bothered people so much. If I were watching a show with a Hindu perspective, I wouldn't object to Ganesh 
for instance, easily smiting archangels. Mostly I remember Gabriel, a maturing hero who stood for humanity and against his brother. I always love this episode for the touching, though ill-fated interactions between Gabriel and Lucifer. Yeah, no, I love the conversation between the two before they fight and obviously end. But yes, no, you're right about the Ganesh thing too. Um, if it happened in Hindu television, I wouldn't care. I'd be like, okay, cool. That's you know, your interpretation of it. When I first watched this episode, I was surprised that the show decided to bring actual gods on the show, like Kali and Odin. I was shocked at the deterioration of Lucifer's vessel. Sucks that Dad forgot about this during his era. I really enjoyed seeing Gabriel finally get a backbone and stand up to Lucifer. I love seeing Gabriel change into someone who cared about the humanity, and I was sad when Lucifer killed him. He never should have returned in season 13. Dab ruined a great moment in the show by bringing Gabriel back. Yes, he did. He definitely did. It's probably one of my most hated retcons of this entire show. Um, as for Nick's body deteriorating, I think they make some MacGuffin thing about how Crowley said that, oh, they fixed his body or something so it won't deteriorate. I think I remember hearing that. Was waiting years for you to review this episode. I remember the shock and awe and excitement I felt watching this when actual pagan gods were introduced and the big ones like Odin, Kali, etc. I love the lore building of the pagan gods saying the angels and the Christian god came and stole the planet rather than deny it. Lucifer says that they lost the planet because the pagans were worse than humans, etc. Of course, in latter seasons, we learn why pagan gods thought they were here before, because they forgot, except for the gambling god lady from season 15. Oh god, no. Oh, well, actually, I do like that episode. I really wish for Kali's actress to come back. It was so cool. I remember many real-life pagans hated how Lucifer massacred the pagan gods on the show. Whether you're an opponent being like the one god, it's hard to write for him without limiting oxymoron. Otherwise, Otherwise, the story falls apart, although making him not involved a lot is a way to write around that. It's just cool seeing the two lures interact. I give this episode a 7 out of 7 for the excitement, the fan hype it gave me, and the epicness I felt as Lucifer, who was doing a hallway fight scene way before Daredevil made it cool, massacred the gods like nothing. Although I wish they were explored more and Kali came back, like when Gabriel came back in season 13, but then again, maybe not. She probably would have died with him. I do kind of miss that Kali never came back because I liked her. I thought she was cool. Um, as for hallway fights, yes, it's cool seeing Lucifer mask her, but, but I, I love the hallway fights in Daredevil. Oh, they're so good. This is my third favorite episode behind End and Abandon All Hope. I like the concept of various gods from various religions working together to try and stop a world-ending event. Although I enjoyed the back and forth banter between Odin and the Chinese deity, I felt like it was little to no actual discussion on how the gods intended to involve themselves in stopping the apocalypse. Yeah, I will admit that it kind of just ends, like they don't, they, they're arguing, but you don't really see much of what they their plan is. I would have been interested in what their plan might have been. Another thing I liked was the return of Gabriel. One of the, con one constitute that stood out for me was the part of him still, that part of him still cared uh, for the gods, even if they killed him after finding out his true identity. It showed a different side of him that hadn't been seen before. We also see a random cameo from the Ghost Facers. I always forgot that every time I watch this episode. Yeah, actually, so do I. In contrast to that, we have the return of Lucifer, destroys the pagans, making him one of the best moments in the show's history. In fact, the first scene Gabriel shares with his brothers, he's actually foreshadowing how Lucifer killed the pagan. And then when Gabriel steps up and confronts his brother, I enjoyed the dialogue between him and Lucifer because of how serious and personal it was. It was such an impressive scene, and unfortunately Lucifer kills Gabriel, which was heartbreaking, at least the first time I watched it. Now when I see it, I get angry because they retconned it. Lastly, we get one of the most difficult scenes to sit through, the introduction of Pestilence. I lost it when he sneezed on the guy working at the register. It was so disgusting. Oh yeah, that's like uh, customer service and nightmare fuel, that whole interaction. Yeah, I, I still don't understand why Dab did it. He retconned him. I, I guess fans wanted Gabriel to come back, but it just makes this such pivotal character develop moment of this character completely wasted. and. I still look at it with the same impact and feeling that I had because I'm just never going to watch season 13 to 15 really ever again, but I admit what he did kind of really ruined it. Oh Joe, wow, this is a lot, buddy. <laughs> Hammer of the Gods is best described to me as a fun episode, although those who practice paganism really hated this episode given that Christianity is literally putting the foot down by assertion uh, of being the strongest than, stronger than pagan gods. It doesn't bother me, but I can get where others are coming from when the devil is described as a bratty little child with a temper tantrum. 
And Lucifer describes the pagan gods, goddesses, as worse than humans, worse than demons, and yet claim to be gods. And they call me prideful. I love that line, that is a good part. It's also interesting to note that in this episode, Gabriel claims to have skipped the end of how everything will turn out. But I love how Kali interrupts him saying, your story, not ours, Westerners, I swear. The sheer ignorance, you think you're the only ones on Earth. You pillage and butcher in your God's name but you're not the only religion and he's not the only god. There is something that I wish in a lot of ways was explored for, with Supernatural of the Abrahamic god versus all the other gods with pagan beliefs. But it turns out Chuck is merely the creator of it all and not necessarily a representation of the Arabic god. I try sticking to focus on the season and not latter events when watching the show chronologically. That being said, I love how Gabriel goes out on a high note were here by choosing to help humanity despite claiming what he saw before and die as protecting Sam and Dean and Kali. It really is a shame that we never saw her again in the show because she could have been an interesting villain for the post-apocalypse of the show. That's There's actually a good reason to me, in my opinion, of why Gabriel survived from fighting Lucifer, but I really debate addressing it because I want to focus on the story chronologically and how it was visually impressive and very well done overall regarding Gabriel's apparent death for season 5. If anyone wants to discuss it, I would be more than happy to, but I doubt it will appeal to anyone who really hates Andrew Dabb and Robert Singer for bringing Gabriel back in season 13. And I don't want to just have a hate to hate talk, but would rather want more of an understanding and seeing some common ground. I unfortunately can't. Uh, I already see that there's a lot of comments and I'm great that you had a discussion, but uh, I'm not going to go into that because this is already so long. It's also intriguing to me how the rings of the horsemen come back to be in a MacGuffin near the end of the season for the brothers. I would love, love this storyline point to be addressed earlier in the season because it could have been a one-time episode with Pestilence and a separate episode with Death instead of being crammed into a punitive episode of the season. Uh, it doesn't. It actually works out pretty decently, but I get where you're coming from. I do have that same complaint. When I rewatch this episode, I don't think of the retcons and the other seasons or the stories that could have been. The way I always watch Supernatural is focusing on what is happening presently and how it affects Sam and Dean and all the other characters that are part of the season. Hammer of the Gods took place in Munici, Indiana, where I went to college. One redeeming thing about this episode, pagan gods, who cares? I didn't and still don't. There was some humor in this episode. Dean saying pie display was better than heaven. He tries to pick up Callie and is instantly shot down. Ghostfacers ad? Why? Did that web series ever happen? Gabriel saying, got wings like Kotex, and Lucy, I'm home. When Gabriel died, his wings were shown on, uh, on his, around his body. He was really dead, according to the already established info given in the previous episodes. So how was he brought back in a latter season? So this whole episode was to give the brothers the information that they needed for the Four Horsemen's Rings to put Lucy back in the cage. And we didn't get that until the end and pestilence seemed gross couldn't watch it i usually skip over this episode not one i like to watch admittedly i'm very surprised with this because you you don't really give much of a reason as to why you don't like it just these random little notes would i'm gonna sound a little controversial here but bear with me the first half of this episode i think is complete garbage i couldn't care about the other gods particularly kali whose actress is bland and the character is an annoying hypocrite she talks about the Christians and how they destroy everything and she wants to destroy everything herself. Also, did she literally try to kill Satan with fire? Again, a great character there. I don't know, man. I, I like her, man. I don't know what you have a problem with when it comes to female characters sometimes. I do notice that. However, halfway through, Lucifer comes back and by God, does he come back? Just when you thought he didn't do that much in the second half of the season, he comes in and it's like Darth Vader in Rogue One, delivering one of his most badass moments, massacring them all as has been gods and proving that Satan is the most badass of them all. And of course, Gabriel's sacrifice is nothing short of heartbreaking. He appeared in only four episodes and yet he became one of my favorite characters, so much so that I almost cried when he was gone. And this is especially hard considering he isn't he is permanently dead as evidence of the burned wings. He is dead. Glad to see Dad wrote this episode only to ruin it later. So as a whole, I hate the first half, love the second half. Alright, thank you guys for your comments. We very much appreciate it. And now tell me what you guys think about the devil you know. We're getting there, guys. We're almost there. This goal that I set for myself all the way back in 2016 is finally coming to fruition, so I'm glad you guys are along for the ride for this. But until then, if you guys like the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.